coming up 2 o'clock. Workaholic Wednesdays. Here we go. Get that monthly report. I saw your monthly report. Hmm. Your company looks like a stadium. <laughs> okay, so last time I was talking about, you know, when I bounced. And I had to deal with a lot of that dumb shit, but I didn't quite get into exactly some of the stupider things I had to worry about. Aside from it sometimes coming off like a brothel or a coke den, there's just one incident early, early on that. You know, I just wasn't ready for it. It is not even 11 o'clock at night. We're talking like 10, 15. And there are two drag queens by the bar just verbally going at it. Like, full-on talking shit. And just finger in the air, all of that. One of them is a shorter, demure African American drag queen with her little little entourage of three behind her. The three pockets, as some would say. The other is a Puerto Rican transgender you know, performer that was visiting, who like in full paint and everything. Close to like seven feet tall, hair jacked to Jesus in heels, like the full shebang of bang. And they're just, they're just kind of going at it, just verbally, just talking a little bit of crap. And kind of goes through the stages while this is going on to where I know that it might become an incident. You know, first, one of our bartenders. Make sure he's set up right in front of them, cleaning up. Let's them see that he's ready to take an order. They ignore him. And little Jimmy, one of our sweet, innocent shot boys, who was... Oh, awesome. You know, he was the closest thing to a cinnamon roll I knew of before I knew cinnamon rolls existed, if you get my drift. So I tell him, Jimmy, those li those ladies over there look thirsty. Why don't you go offer them a drink? To which he looks over at me and says, but they seem to be having a conversation. To which I reply, they seem to be thirsty. Why don't you go get them a drink? And so he trots on over there in his little bow tie and mankini. goes to offer him a shot and they both just shoot him down right there they're like brutal about it too like devastating I'm like you didn't have to be mean to the kid he comes back and it's just he's already about to tear up and everything and, you know I, I can't I've already got my hands full I know it for the night so I pull a five out of my pocket and I give it to him of course, near the end of the night, he goes home with, hopefully, his husband, I'm, or future husband, or whatever. But the point I'm making is, those two are still going at it. So we've already had cute bartender shot down. Shot boy shot down. Now comes... The moment that I'm thinking, okay, this has got to, this has got to get them to at least shut up for a second, so I can walk over and like neutralize the situation. When a being known as the disappointment walks by, allow me to explain. 
the disappointment. About 5'10", solid muscle, like just chiseled enough, mostly beef, pierced nipples, pierced tongue, is said to walk with a limp for certain reasons. If you catch what I'm saying there. So, you know, you know he, he's got a pet snake he keeps with him. Everything about this guy screams alpha top dominant. Until you see his lower back tattoo, which in the most beautiful calligraphy known to man, reads... Sucker. So he walks by. And for a moment they do they do like acknowledge his existence, but do give two fucks and go right back to chewing each other out. So it's getting to that point, I'm like, okay, it's not even midnight, and I'm gonna have to be dealing with them. I'm stuck at the back door, the exit, but it, but my view is right there, oh, nice, but my view is right there of the bar, and the Puerto Rican now has at least three beer bottles, two shot glasses, and one of our rare mugs sitting behind her. She hasn't drank that much. That's just where they've been placed. I was like, well, great. She's got weapons if she actually needed them. But with all that going on, again, maybe, maybe it's winding down because, you know, the three pockets... They're starting to, like, not get so, so into it, because they're doing their own thing. And then they pop right back up. But as they pop right back up, the Puerto Rican begins to lean in closer while she's talking, getting it, getting in the face of the demure black drag queen. And make sure one of her tendrils falls forward. I realize this is bait. She's baiting the trap. Like she wants her to go for her hair. Like she's wanting every excuse at this point. Go for the hair. And the little black drag queen only has one hand on her because she's grabbed her clutch with the other. Has that close to her. So she's only got one free hand. But still falls for the trap, lowers her hand, opens it wide, and goes right for the hair. Get her hand caught in it because she just realized it's all real hair. And the Puerto Rican proceeds to execute the most very cool. She proceeds to execute the most ladylike headbutt I've seen ever. Like, it looks like a dance step, if you didn't know what was coming. Lays out the little black drag queen. The pockets have just about lost their shit seeing this. So, before they can do anything... I've said, fuck it, left the door, and I'm getting in between them and the Puerto Rican. The Puerto Rican, I have made sure to lock eyes with, which I probably shouldn't have. She might think I'm challenging her for dominance or something. And I'm telling her... Ma'am, I can't let you continue with this. As she balls her fist up, 
punches by my head, picking off one of the pockets. So now she's dropped two of them. And, good God. By that time, I hear the loudest thing I can, which was a godsend. Fuck's going on! Which was the battle cry of, I'm gonna call him Brick. Because he was built like a brick shit house. Dude was huge. That was his way of neutralizing situations. So he quickly gets back to back with me and turns. So that he's facing the Puerto Rican. And I've got the two conscious pockets, the unconscious pocket, and the black drag queen. I then hear him say, nope, turns back around to where he's holding them off. And I'm having to stare the black, the Puerto Rican down again. To which I have to inform her, I'm sorry, at this point, you have to go. And she says, I know. Brick decides to take the quartet out the right side when I take the Puerto Rican out the left side. Completely separate them. That's it. And as we do that, turn the corner with the Puerto Rican, and she decides to get a handful of me and put her tongue right down my throat. Leaves with a smile, gives me the call me, and walks away. Didn't get the number. <laughs> that was quite an evening. That's just some of the club stories I've got. But, like the message popped up earlier, your cigarette breaks over. That's been Workaholics Wednesday. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell to stay notified. And if you have some crappy job stories, leave them in the comments. Message me on Facebook or Twitter. Let me know. And I will tell your story to the rest of these working schlubs. But until next time, hashtag get back to work! Hashtag 925, work in 925.